This 911 Strong podcast is brought to you by our partners at the Police Credit Union of California. As a financial institution founded by law enforcement for law enforcement and their families over 65 years ago, they have the experience and understanding to help you with all your financial needs, including exclusive products designed specifically for law enforcement professionals. To become a member today, visit the policecu.org. That's the police, the letter C, and the letter U.org. Or call 800-222-1391 and tell them you heard about them from the 911 Strong Podcast. Hello. On this ASMR, I'm just kidding. <laughs> hey guys, it's Aaron. And Kristen. And this is a 9-1 Strong Podcast. And uh, on this episode, we're going to talk about the changes affecting law enforcement. Why it's so hard to retain law enforcement personnel and why so many of our existing law enforcement personnel are leaving in droves. Mm-hmm. Should be an interesting one. It should be. It All will right. be. Yep. Stay tuned for this episode of the 911 Strong Podcast. That starts right now. Station to all units. Prepare to copy. You're listening to the 911 Strong Podcast. Don't act like I never told you. With Aram and Kristen bringing you stimulating discussion. No, I like the sound of that. An entertaining conversation. And now, here's Kristen and Aram. Hey guys, welcome to the 911 Strong Podcast brought to you by the Police Credit Union of California. With me as always is Dispatcher Kristen. Hey. So speaking of dispatchers, how how's the personnel situation going right there? You know what? I can't complain right now because we just hired two more dispatchers. Yeah. Um so we're up we were up two, but we lost we didn't really lose one, but one is temporarily gone because she had a baby. Mm. And then um, we still have, I believe, two other positions, but they did away with those spots altogether. Oh. So we're short-staffed. Um, we're down a supervisor, and we're down two positions that technically we should have. So we're still running short, but not as short, I guess, if that makes sense. Yeah. And that's really just a micro <clears throat> view of what's happening at every agency across the country mm-hmm. right now. We're seeing unprecedented shortages in personnel, not just the sworn people, mm-hmm. but uh, dispatchers, records, uh, all the support staff. Um, it's gotten to the point now where we've seen agencies start contracting out their services. We have a nearby mm-hmm. agency that just a year ago could not staff their graveyard shift. Mm-hmm. So their entire graveyard shift had to be contracted out with the local sheriff's department. Really? Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah. I'm not surprised though. Yeah. It's pretty sad. And yeah. we're, we're just in a situation now where officers and dispatchers and records person, anybody affiliated with law enforcement, they're seeing so much negative being thrown their way mm-hmm. that the ones that are eligible to retire are doing what? Retiring. Yeah. They're like, screw it. It's yep, not worth done. sticking Over. around. Mm-hmm. I'm out of here. And, um, you know, it, it's hard to, uh, regionalize this information, but I'm going to, it's the best way to do it. But like in some States you Mm -hmm. max out after 15, 20 years. Oh, I'd be already retired. I know. Right. So, but, but the retirement's different too. They they only max out like at 60%. Yeah. Whereas us in California, we can retire at 90% of our highest paid year, but we have to do a whole lot of years. We have to do all, yeah, I have to do 30 or 55. Right. Mm -hmm. 30 years at the age or, or be 55 years Mm -hmm. of age. So, um, for people outside of California, that are not f- familiar with this retirement system, um, for Kristen, um, she has to work 30 years mm-hmm. or get reach the age of 55, whichever comes first and she'll be eligible to retire. But however years of service she has under her belt at 55, she gets a percentage, mm-hmm. um, times the years of service that she did. So let's just throw out a number cause I don't want to <laughs> give away your retirement, but let's just say That's okay. 2% at, I don't know what, uh, three, let's do 3%. Mm-hmm. 3% at uh, 30 years, that's 90%. So 90% mm-hmm. of your highest paid year, mm-hmm. uh, that's a substantial retirement. So there is yeah. incentive for people like us to stay in the job. Right. Um, yeah. Whereas I could retire in five and a half years, mm-hmm. but I don't want to. Yeah. Um, but I can see why people that are at retirement mm-hmm. um, just want to walk away from it right now because yeah. everything being thrown their way. Yeah. And it's kind of unfair um, to the public. Um, but I understand, you know, right. um, you're, you, yes, you are obligated to do your job while you're here doing your job. Um, but at the same time, your family comes first. And mm-hmm. if you're in a situation where 
your family life isn't great because your work life isn't great, mm -hmm. then you probably should think about doing other things. And I know people that are completely happy. Mm -hmm. A good friend of ours moved to Idaho. He retired early. Yeah. And decided he was going to be a truck driver. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and he's completely happy doing that. He's doing that. great. Yeah. yeah. And, um, you know, uh, <clears throat> we had people leave the job for other reasons that maybe have regretted their decision and that wish they would have stayed. Um, but all in all, the, no matter the reason why they left, people are leaving. Mm -hmm. And we're seeing unprecedented numbers of people leaving the job. Uh, retirements increased by 45% last year. Yeah, that's, that's a lot. Yeah, and then resignations went up 18%. People that yeah. just weren't eligible to retire, mm -hmm. that walked away from the job, that's called a resignation. Um, that's And that's just the sworn side. These numbers, yeah. I couldn't find stats for dispatchers. But I doubt there's really any coverage over what dispatch is going through, but I'm sure it's the same. It really is. I mean, we've seen, I mean, you were <clears throat> forced to work overtime. We know mm -hmm. a number of agencies nearby that are forced oh, yeah. overtime. Mm -hmm. um, and over time, I mean, dispatch on your regular hours is hard enough as it is. <laughs> yeah. Let alone having to work yeah. additional hours. I mean, yeah. you're, you're pulling out your hair. Um, yeah. They're working 18 hour shifts. They're working, you know, five to six days a week. Right. And it's just those agencies that are forcing their dispatchers to work that is going to create a lot of burnout and a lot of animosity towards the department. You're not going to get good service because everybody is burnt out. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's really bad. It's really bad all over. So if you were in a, a boardroom <clears> and ex <throat> having an executive, having an executive management meeting or something, trying to figure out how to mitigate this, the obvious question, uh, the obvious answer is, oh, we need to recruit more people. Mm -hmm. We're losing pe our existing people. We need to bring people from the outside. But right. what are the problems that they're facing with recruiting right now? Well, I think a lot of it too, depending, I mean, again, depending on what agency, it's how they're recruiting too. Mm -hmm. Like if you just put it up on a website, like you're going to get very minimal recruits. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you're gonna have to make it more obvious and more enticing. I know that there's some agencies that pay for people to come interview mm -hmm. or they're giving them the signing bonuses oh, yeah. and stuff like that. And Palm Springs know. Police Department is giving a $30,000 signing bonus for new officers. Yeah. How that's, crazy. That's is a down that? payment on a house. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. It's just crazy. I remember I was in um, Chicago and one of the um, captains there was just saying they can't keep them. Mm -hmm. Like they used to have to fight people to like to or not fight people but i guess it was really like they had their pick of the litter right like who everybody wanted to come yep. to chicago pd and if they couldn't then they go to the smaller surrounding agencies mm -hmm. and wait for their chance to come and just due to the the uh, climate that's out there in chicago kind of like i guess la like nobody's putting in for anything yeah. so they are there's so many vacancies so it's how are you going to entice somebody when a, maybe part of the department won't, doesn't support their own officers, and then you know the the mayor or city or whoever doesn't support them either. Right. It's scary to think about, mm -hmm. like, you know, I'm 23 years now into the job. <clears throat> mm -hmm. when, is it 23? I don't know. I'm 22. Yeah. Well, let's say 22, 23. 22 and a half. Because uh, I started the academy <laughs> in 99, so we're in, yeah, whatever. Mm -hmm. So 22 and a half. When I, I wasn't thinking about those things back then because yeah. back then, this seemed like the most secure job in the world. Yeah, it was a whole different type of... Right, I guess. But now, yeah. when you're thinking about entering a career, knowing that you have to do this for the next thirty years or so, um, it's probably scary, right? Going, hey, how am I gonna, how am I going to survive? Sure, I'm healthy enough to survive it. I'm stable enough at home to survive this. Mm -hmm. But even if I do my job correctly, yeah, I'm still at the um, beck and call and whim of the city council or mm -hmm. <laughs> the chief of police. Um, you know, I don't know if they're going to back me mm -hmm. on on. You know, yeah, a shooting, whether it's justified or not. Yeah, or use of force. Yep. So yeah, if you're a young officer looking at a career now, it's you have a lot more to think about. I mean, your pa yeah. parents probably are telling them. Probably. Yeah. Hey, I don't want you to know, do this. Pick you know. a plan B. Yeah. Yeah. And it, it's so hard because it is this this day and age, younger people are so connected to media, mm -hmm. the, the news. Um, internet news and whatnot that they're they're probably buying into a little bit of it right unless you intimately know that unless you grew up in the job or yeah yeah i mean to some extent because that's <clears throat> the new new recruits are the ones that are up and coming i mean that might be all that they're familiar with so you only know what you know until you know right you know? that's so. why i think the explorer and cadet <laughs> program is so good you know we have a couple yeah. cadets at our agency and um 
they know the culture, you mm-hmm. know, because they're, they're young. They're, yeah. A lot of them are 18, 19, 20 going to college and yeah. you know, using this as a job and exploring the possible, the feasibility of maybe staying in the job and seeing if they can even do it. That's why I think the cadet program is great. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of them are like, Hey, um, we are misunderstood. These guys aren't prejudiced. These guys aren't racist. They're not yeah. abusive. I hang out with them every day. Yeah. Uh, unless they're putting on an act for the last two years, I think I know them pretty yeah. well. And so they feel confident going to the job. But what hurts them is when they see uh, an officer that does everything justified, um, you know, like Officer Dejas uh, from yes. uh, San Diego area. Mm-hmm. He, he recently won his case. Yeah, thankfully. Um, I talked to his attorney, Casey Castillo. Uh-huh. Um, do you know Casey? No, I don't think so. Um, I'll tell you who she is later, and you'll, okay. you'll remember who she is. Okay. Um, I'm she, bad with names. Yeah. Um, but she's an awesome attorney. Mm-hmm. Um, she's a, an LDF attorney, uh, and she represents a lot of police agencies and police departments. Mm-hmm. And this case, a lot of people didn't want to touch um, because it was in the media. But she yeah. was like, hey, we're going to handle this. Um, hopefully in the near future. We talked about getting him uh, on onto our mm-hmm. podcast and to talk about wife, what happened. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But... Um, it should have been maybe maybe five years ago. This would have been cleared, no problem. Oh yeah. But because of the current political yeah. climate, mm-hmm. um, he ended up getting in trouble, lost his job over it. Right. And, um, so, so long story short, let's just say you're a cadet now and you're seeing this case. Wait a minute, he did everything right. And the right, he did not, it by the book. Yeah, and the yeah. department's not backing him. Mm-hmm. Why would I want to do this job? Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. um, and it's got to be scary. And then, yeah. and I can go on and on about how fast the years go by because it, it really has. It does. It does go by fast. But a lot of things can happen during that time, mm-hmm. you know, so it, it is scary and I don't want to convince anybody. I used to be the guy that was like, no, dude, you, this is an awesome job. Do it. But I also feel like now if I encourage someone to do it, I take a little ownership yeah. should something happen to them. Yeah, I <laughs> you know. know. I hate to be that guy that says, that gets approached later on, dude, you told me to do this job and now here I am. Um, yeah. Fired. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks, something. Aaron. But <clears throat> I mean, the pendulum will eventually swing back at some point in time. It's just, it's going to be a long time, I think, for this one. And unless, God forbid, we have some insane tragedy like 9-11. But even then, I don't even know because our right. our top government leaders are so mm-hmm. two-faced, I guess. Yeah, I, I mean, we, say. 9-11 was the right combination <clears throat> of good things. We had the right leadership. Had, yeah. You know. It just all kind of fell in line in, in that aspect I guess but and then I mean you can even say well do your research with departments and what their policies are and their retirement and all that stuff and how they police like our city polices a lot differently than other cities and but again that could all change like we said we're gonna either continue with our acting chief or we're gonna get a new chief and if we get a new chief they're gonna want to do things either one are gonna do things their way so that can always change with you know when it goes from chief to chief or new city council or new mayor so even if you did all your research potentially things could change so it's just i think if you you have to just i don't know do all your research see what the retirement's like the benefits are like and then you just really need to know if this is your calling and if this is your passion, if you love it. Because if you don't have those things, I can tell you right now, you shouldn't be a cop, period. Yeah. And at the end of the day, you're going to have to make some concessions. Mm-hmm. Like, it's a give and take. Yeah. I, I've heard people say, hey, I'm going to go to Florida because they love their cops. They're giving all their cops incentives to go there. Mm-hmm. But their retirement isn't that great. Their mm-hmm. pay isn't that great. And... um at the end of the day, why, we're not doing these jobs for free, right? Mm-hmm. We're doing them to support our families. And that's the kind of the ironic thing. California has a reputation for maybe not supporting cops as much. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a liberally run state. Mm-hmm. But the thing about liberally run states is they're in cahoots with unions. Mm-hmm. And California has that, like, again, again, that rare combination where yeah. we're one of the few states that allows police officers to unionize. Mm-hmm. Um, and we have strong unions. And we have strong unions, and they're supported by our politicians, so that's why we have strong pay and benefits. You know, we have officers, yeah. you know, <laughs> your father went to the FBI National Academy, and um, I remember having a conversation with him about um, when they go there, they don't talk about, you know, the, the California cops. They have a pact where they don't talk about their pay and benefits mm-hmm. um, with the cops from other states because the disparity is so huge. Yeah. Um so yeah, I'm not bragging um, because there are benefits to working in a in a state that maybe your citizens support you. Mm-hmm. But like the city we work, 
I get more pats on the back than dirty yeah. looks. So I yeah. think, you know, it's, it's a, it, you've got to be, you got to do your research. Mm-hmm. Um, and you got to do something that's going to sustain a retirement. We, we get a pension in California, which means we, we get a paycheck till the day we die if we make it to retirement. Mm-hmm. And even, and if I die and my wife survives me, she gets a paycheck. So mm-hmm. it really is beneficial for a guy like me who entered this field with just a high school diploma and mm-hmm. not much experience, um, yeah. to be able to, to, Same. yeah, to become what I became, um, you know, eventually we got our education and all, you know, we training and all that stuff to get to positions higher. Yeah. But we were really lucky to enter this, this job, um, with just a high school diploma mm-hmm. and, uh, make it to where we are today. We live pretty comfortably. Yeah. Um, we have friends that are doctors that live just as comfortably as we do. And it's like, we look, we sometimes have to pinch myself, you know, um, I pull yeah. up and, you know, I go to your house and I, it looks like a house out of uh, oh my gosh! A magazine. Well, if you haven't listened to the last episode, we established that her house is worth two and a half million dollars. <laughs> it's no, it's published no. on an episode of the Nine One Strong podcast, so it's got to be true. <laughs> I'm just kidding, guys. Um, but no, they. Uh, the point of all this is they work very hard. Uh, both of them work. Um, whoa, my dog! Sorry, the dog just opened the door. Um, but we have. Uh, they work very hard. You know, two dogs are in my studio, <laughs> but they work very hard for their lifestyle and their income. And, um, sorry guys, if you don't know by now, we record in a studio in my house, uh, in, in the office and our kids are all, they get together. We make a day out of it. Um, and the dogs decided they were going to jump in and join us. <laughs> they have since been escorted yeah. out promptly. <laughs> so anyways, Kristen took care of it. She's also second, uh, as the security of the studio, <laughs> locked them out. But any, the the point of all this is we work very hard. It's just not. I don't yeah. want to give people this false illusion that uh, being a cop in California affords this awesome lifestyle. Um, and as I alluded to in an episode ago, um, it's delayed gratification, not instant yeah. gratification. Yeah. So I think that's another thing that turns potential young officers off in this job is they can go to school. A lot of them go to school. A lot mm-hmm. of you know. Uh, well, I think a lot of um, cities are cities and counties are now requiring some education too. There yeah. are some that so, do. You know, and that's another thing about recruiting too. Yeah, recruit. You know, so can I talk about that? I can't know. I can't talk about it. Um I, I signed a contract. You and I both signed a contract that we wouldn't say disparaging remarks about our city. So let's talk about other cities that do this because okay. other cities do uh for this reason. When they advertise on their police recruitment flyers the base pay, mm-hmm. it looks horrible, right? Because they don't add the roll-ups on there, right? They and you, when you talk to these cities, they say they do that because they don't want their constituents to say, "Hey, our cops get paid a lot of money," mm-hmm. so they show the lowest possible pay you'll make. Right now, if you're a potential recruit, you're going to look at that and say, "No, yeah. I have student debt to pay off because mm-hmm. you're requiring me to have an education now." Right, I'm going to go be an accountant or a lawyer or something, right. and, yeah, or a doctor. Um, but my argument is our citizens don't peruse through the um, police magazines where they recruit, right? <laughs> they don't. But you know that there's always like, you know, like the ones that are on YouTube that go and like try to create problems yes. and stuff. Yeah. So there are some of those people or even maybe some of the city council members that see that and like, why are we paying them that much? And yeah. it's because they don't understand what the job entails. And because we're short, we're so short staffed in many agencies yeah, we get paid a lot more because now we're forced to continue working at a time and a half rate because right. those spots are not being filled because they're being, you know, either plugged up or taken away by city council. So it's kind of like you get, you have to pick and choose your battles. And Yeah, because on one hand, if we did advertise the top step rate with your education experience mm-hmm. and training. Yes. Man, that would attract lines out the door if, they, if right. people realize. What, and that would probably be better than saying, like, we'll give you a $30,000 bonus. You'd probably get yeah. more, I, I don't know, maybe long-term quality than just, a, oh, I can get a chunk. I'll go there, get my certificate or whatever, and lateral to a different agency. Unless right. maybe there's a stipulation they have to be there for so long. Yeah, I don't know. I, I think LAPD had a contract where you had to do <laughs> at least five, five years, years before you left. Yeah. Um, I was with another large, uh, well, I can say it, I public, the sheriff's department and they didn't have that contract. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I left after five years anyway, I was vested. And, yeah. um, at, when I came to my agency at the time, they were like the third highest paid agency in Southern California. Mm-hmm. They had the best benefits. Um, and so people were, were lining, you know, up yeah. out the door, 
But that's my point is they were known for having great pay and benefits. So obviously you're going to attract the best Mm -hmm. candidates. Now, if you're an agency that is showing the least favorable pay and benefits package, Mm -hmm. you're not going to get the most qualified candidates. You're going to get the, I hate to say it, the bottom of the barrel. Yeah. So unfortunately we're as a, as a profession, we're scraping the bottom of the barrel. We're not getting the best candidates right now. Um, there are, I'm going to do disclaimer. There are some good candidates that are out there, but overall, I think throughout the country, yeah, you're going to get some, some not qualified people because of how your cities run or counties run or, and what you're offering them. Yeah. Uh, you still are still going to get those people that are like, no, it looks fun. I'm going to do it. And they realize that, you know, it's 80% of the job is paperwork and yeah. then they leave. But for the, the people that really want to make this a profession, they've done their homework and they know what it is. They've been on ride alongs. Mm-hmm. They, and you can tell when you're um, interviewing them too, yeah. who's done their homework and who hasn't. Yeah. Well, I have, I am fearful that this will continue until, like you said, um, we have a, another major event. Um, you know, the pendulum needs to swing the other way. And when it does, you know, I'm hopeful that we'll have great candidates again. Agencies won't struggle to recruit, but right now, um, we've, we're just putting a bandage on things. We're not, um, you know, the, the sieve is leaking and we're just putting bandages on selective holes and, and hoping that we don't yeah. Lose everything right it's, away. It's more, it seems like it's more, uh, what can they do right now? And what, instead of what can they do to take care of like the future and like already start working on that? You know, like you said, with the whole band aid thing. Yeah. So it's just, they just see what's in front of them, not like what's in the distance. Yeah. You know what I thought was, was pretty unique about your daughter. Your daughter is, uh, she turns 22, right? No, she just turned 20. Oh, I'm sorry. She just turned 20. <laughs> I don't know why I had 22 stuck in my head. I don't know, but don't yeah. yeah. Don't fast forward for but, me. But, <laughs> I mean, unlike people her age right mm-hmm. now, this generation, mm-hmm. she moved out on her own. Right. She got a job on her own. Yeah. And you don't see that. That was our generation when we were growing yeah. up. We couldn't wait to do that. We were out of the house by 18 because that's what we wanted to do. But yeah. you can't do that now because yeah. it's expensive. But the ones yeah. that can, it shows a lot of initiative. Those yeah. are the people that we want Applying yeah. for police jobs. Yeah. I mean, it's just, like you said, it's as many benefits as there is to California. There are a lot of good things. But for this newer generation trying to move out on your own, she was, you know, kind of apartment shopping with her friends. And it was going to be, I think, 800 to 1000 per person just to move out with mm-hmm. roommates. Yep. Whereas with us, I'm sure it was probably a couple hundred. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, so she ended up moving out of state and now it's only a couple hundred for her to live in a nice house with a huge backyard yeah. instead of a tiny little apartment with, you know, individual parking stalls. And, um, she's in a beautiful city and yeah, she, she got a good job and over minimum wage and yeah, she's on her own figuring it out and still going to school too. Right. So, so that does give me hope because there ones. are people like that out there, even in this generation. Yeah. I know we always like to put bad things on each generation that comes up, but I mean, I think with, it all comes down to a, the parents. So the people who are older, they're complaining or complaining about their kids or, you know, their grandkids, but all where right. do they learn it from? All right. Final thoughts. Where do you see the recovery happening? Do you think it's going to happen in 2022? Or do you think it's going to still be a couple more years? I'd say 23 or 24. Because I think right now they're kind of realizing that this whole defund the police and uh, reimagining police work using your words and hugs is not the way to do things. And it's not working because crime is skyrocketing and they're losing officers in droves and Mm -hmm. Um, so now they have to scramble and figure out how to fix that. So I think this year will be them trying to figure out how to save their tail in their city because I'm sure elections are going to start coming up mm-hmm. for a lot of these people. Um, so yeah, I think 23 or 24, maybe they'll start turning around, going, you know, a different direction and hiring more officers and maybe doing it the right way. And, um, I agree with you. I think it's, I think it's starting to happen now though. Um, you see a couple of politicians that were mugged, mm-hmm. carjacked celebrities that are now saying, Hey, the ones that live in LA, yeah, they're like, Hey, this is not working. You're, um, the, the yeah, people now that, that they're being affected. Yeah. Yeah. So I think as, as I hate to say it, but 
more of these influencers, celebrities, politicians, yeah, um, bad things happen to them, and they feel like what it, they feel what it's like to be the common person. Mm-hmm. I can see the pendulum switching, so I think it's starting now. Um, I think people are at the breaking point now, mm-hmm. and now that we're in 2022, still in COVID, yeah, um, people are, are not working; they're more desperate. The desperation continues. Crime will increase. Mm-hmm. The they're law, releasing more um, inmates out. Yeah. I know by us, they're going to close down that jail soon. Yep. I think people are going to get fed up, and I think mm-hmm. it's going to swing the other way. Hopefully. Hopefully, hopefully. I'll give you that. Yeah. So, you know, you young people out there or even middle-aged people that are thinking about jumping the, jumping careers and joining the law enforcement, um, you, you heard it from us, people that have been on the job for quite a while. The pendulum is going to swing mm-hmm. and it's going to happen soon. And uh, we need good people. Yeah. And that's at the... Good, solid... Look, I've made my career not people. being the best cop, <laughs> mm-hmm. right? I'm not yeah. the best... I wasn't the best gang guy, the best drug guy um, intelligence guy, whatever, but mm-hmm. I was a good person yeah. and I think I've, you know, I've climbed the ranks pretty good and made a career out of being a good person yeah. that, and you, you hit it on the nose. We need good people because mm-hmm. at the end of the day, when it comes to co- being competitive for promotions, would you promote the guy that had the most arrest stats if he wasn't a good person? Right. Uh, well, now I'm going to beg to differ with you because okay. it depends on your definition of good person. I'd rather have there, there are a lot of people that are amazing officers, but not the best people outside of work, right. I guess you could yeah. say. So I would be promoting maybe, yes, the one that is hardworking, hard-nosed, that um, stays within policy and procedure and is a go-getter and, um, and that isn't bringing down the department. So yeah, I guess that would be not the, would you say not the bad person? Yeah. I mean, like, when it comes down to ethics and morals, that's what yeah. I look for. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Then yes. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, we have people that have ethics and morals, but they're slugs. You know, yes. they, mm-hmm. so yeah, it has to be the right, obviously right someone that works hard. Yeah. yeah. But if you have like your three, your top three have equal stats, mm-hmm. but one guy isn't as morally, his compass isn't pointed the right, in the direction. right direction. Yeah. You're going to look for the person that's a good person, right? Yeah. So that's what we're looking for. We need more yeah. good people. The work ethic will be there because that gets weeded out in the academy. Yeah. Uh, you know, if you're not a hustler, we'll find out. It'll get re- weeded out during training. We, yeah. You know, in, in dispatch, we've let go of trainees. In patrol, oh, yeah. we've let go of trainees. Mm-hmm. So yes, do people slip through the cracks? Of course. But we're looking ultimately for people that can make sound decisions that have a good moral compass that have good work ethic. Yeah. And if that person is you, whether you want to be dispatcher, cop, records, clerk, cadet, whatever, we need you. Yeah. We need you now. Yeah. Sign up. Don't be afraid. And if you ever want to talk about it, don't reach out to me cause I won't talk to you. Reach out to Kristen. I'm kidding. Uh, <laughs> reach out to both of us. I know we're very, we, we try to answer our messages. Um, we will be better on our podcast page. I swear. Wow, that one's hard. It's hard because it's new. Yeah. We don't follow back a lot of people on that page. So mm-hmm. when someone messages us, it doesn't show up on our message queue. It shows yeah. up in message requests and we don't, that number is really tiny mm-hmm. and um, we, we, we don't even look in that side sometimes, um, but we'll make a better effort to do that. Yes. So, but feel free to reach out to our personal pages because our personal pages um, we're, we're flooded with DMs, so we're forced to kind of look in all those things. Mm-hmm. Um, so don't be afraid to reach out to us if you're on the fence in this career. We'll give you advice. We won't convince you one way or the other, but we'll definitely give you a realist point of view. Mm-hmm. An honest one. Yeah. All right. I think that hashes out this episode. Of the 911 Strong Podcast. All right. We'll catch you guys later. Bye. You've been listening to the 911 Strong Podcast with Aram and Kristen. If you like this episode, please check out our other episodes. And don't forget to tell your friends. Find us on Instagram and smash that follow button. Thanks again for listening and for your loyal support. See you next time.